relations between Zimbabwe and Egypt date back to the pre-independence era when Cairo assisted in the war of liberation. But are these two countries having economic trade? Well, this will be answered on today's program. Hello and welcome to Business Brief. I am Makanaka Masenyama and on this program, I am blessed to have the Egyptian ambassador to Zimbabwe, His Excellency Ambassador Amar, to discuss his views on the country's relations and how the two economic trade is going between the two nations. So, Ambassador, our viewers would want to understand the relations between Zimbabwe and Egypt. Uh, let's talk about the diplomatic ties. Well, um, let me say that Egypt and, and Zimbabwe go a long way back. Uh, we share a long history of uh, 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 very good political relations between both our countries since uh, uh, do, a long time ago, uh, since Zimbabwe was uh, fighting for its own independence. Uh, Egypt had uh, helped the uh, fighters, the struggle fighters. Among among us, uh, one one of them was uh, amongst amongst one of them was uh, His Excellency President Mnangagwa. He received his training in uh, in Egypt. Uh, that was during the uh, Nasser era. That was uh, uh, Egypt was championing the uh, cause of the African nations and the liberation movements uh, all over the African continent. Uh, once Zimbabwe uh, declared its independence in 1980. Egypt was one of the uh, 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 very first countries that recognized the nascent nation and uh, developed uh, uh, political and economic relations uh, with Zimbabwe since then. So currently, what should be your assessment of the relation between these two countries? Uh, absolutely uh, uh, very good uh, cordial relations that happily exists between uh, both our, our countries. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, I couldn't, uh, uh, I, if I would say that uh, we're, we're always uh, uh, at coming to the help of each other, uh, uh, one another in the international forums and in the uh, uh, African Union, we're uh, two, good, uh, uh, two good friendly nations in the, uh, with a very good standing in the African Union uh, uh, nations within the African Union nations and uh, so we have very good cordial relations and at the top between both presidents as well uh, the relationship is very cordial and uh, uh, very friendly. So moving on what should be done to transform the excellent relations between these two countries into economic prosperity for both parties? A lot a lot should be done and can be done I mean, my basic, uh, the, the, it, it's basic thing that you have very political, a very excellent political relationship between both, uh, both nations that we should expand on and we should try to develop into uh, uh, magnificent economic relations as well. That's what, what we're doing. And this is uh, first and foremost the direction and the directive that I got from my president. And uh, even when I met His Excellency President Menengagwa, he mentioned that there's a, a, a very big room uh, in order to improve and work on uh, uh, boosting relations in the economic uh, sphere. Uh, having said that, I'm, I'm sure that my colleague, uh, the uh, Zimbabwean ambassador in Cairo, has the same uh, directives and has the same instructions. So we're both working in tandem, hand in hand, in order to uh, uh, foster the economic relations in order to bring it to par to the excellent economic uh, political relations that uh, happily exists between both nations. Okay, like you're saying that when you met President Emerson Mnangagwa, you see that there's room for economic relations in Zimbabwe. So having said that, are there any Egyptian companies interested in coming to invest in Zimbabwe? And if so, are there any companies established in Zimbabwe and do they have any offices? Well, right now we don't have any uh, uh, companies that have any offices in Zimbabwe, but we do have uh, uh, some of the very big companies uh, like uh, uh, Al-Arabi which is a, 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 an electrical uh, giant, manufacturing giant and, uh, and Kiriazi which is another, uh, uh, both are privately owned, uh, that uh, have many, uh, 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 many products that come to the Zimbabwe market. They don't have offices right now but we still, have, we, we, we still can build on that. Uh, with the uh, because they have some experience before coming uh, to uh, Zimbabwe to assume my post here, I did make a little bit of a, uh, my homework, if you will, and I, I went around, saw the business community, and uh, uh, I saw that they are very up uh, and enthusiastic 
about the opportunities that the Zimbabwe offers. And uh, with the Second Republic here, uh, that is uh, open for business for everybody, uh, it, I think the Egyptian companies would take, uh, would grab the opportunity and would come here. And this is part of my uh, my day-to-day -day work, is to uh, uh, bring uh, the Egyptian uh, uh, companies uh, into understanding what is offered here in the uh, Zimbabwe markets and what does Zimbabwe offer for uh, uh, whether it's FDI, uh, whether it's joint ventures, and uh, there is a lot of room in, uh, in which we can expand our uh, bilateral economic relations, specifically in the fields of agriculture, uh, tourism and health, which are the three main pillars of the Zimbabwean economy. Let's move on to the next question, which is that Zimbabwe is still under economic sanctions that were imposed by the Western world. What is Egypt's position to this? Well, the the sanctions uh, are imposed by the Western Hemisphere countries and uh, uh, Egypt is part of the AU. Uh, uh, it, uh, uh, the AU stands as, uh, for the uh, immediate abolition of such sanctions. The AU uh, has steadfast uh, and, and was adamant in saying that these sanctions should be uh, uh, abolished. Uh, whether it be it on Zimbabwe or Sudan. The Sudan has the same problem as well. And uh, uh, both countries, uh, Egypt being part of the EU, uh, we uh, uh, stand behind this decision, uh, stand behind this enunciation 100%, and we would like to see that the, these sanctions are uh, abolished on Zimbabwe and the Sudan as soon as possible. Okay, so Currently, we are under the era of COVID-19. We would want to hear how business is going under coronavirus in Egypt. Well, a, uh, well th first of all, thank God that uh, uh, Zimbabwe here has, has controlled, uh, is controlling the virus. We're very uh, thankful to that, uh, that the government is doing a, a good job in controlling the virus, virus, and it's manifested in the numbers of the affected people and the numbers of death. Uh, it, having said that, uh, it's ravaging the whole world and it's something that everybody is, uh, is uh, uh, really affected from. Uh, Egypt is, is not immune from that. I mean, we've, uh, we have our share of the COVID-19 pandemic as well. At the beginning of the, uh, like in, in, in end of March, we had a, a total closure for a few months, like what Zimbabwe did. And then we gradually uh, started opening the economy back and uh, uh, we see a second wave hitting the Americas and uh, the European continent. But until now, thank God, uh, we did not see that uh, uh, hike in, in the numbers uh, and the spike in the numbers in Egypt as in Zimbabwe. So still under control. Uh, how, it affected, how it affected business? It did affect businesses all over the world. I mean, this is something that uh, uh, it, it's, uh, everybody is reeling from. It's something that it's no secret. Everybody is affected from. So uh, the government has done a, a lot, has put together a lot of measures in order to try to compensate uh, the uh, uh, small business, uh, small businesses in the within the uh, business community, uh, and try to do and try to try to put together a lot of. Uh, 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 measures that could help the population in order to face the pandemic, economically speaking, and try to uh, uh, to bolster the uh, the way the population can uh, overcome this uh, this gravity that everybody is is reading from. Any last words as the ambassador of Egypt to Zimbabwe to the business community in Zimbabwe? My advice to 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 the business community is to go go out there and and vigorously. Uh, uh, speak to uh, to countries and 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 speak to the business communities in other parts of the world. Uh, uh, I know that there are uh, some sort of syndicates or uh, or uh, groupings whereby they uh, some business people would come together under this umbrella. Uh, it's up to this to this umbrella and to these people to uh, vigorously go out and and market Zimbabwe on the international level. Zimbabwe has a, a lot of potentials, big potentials in the areas of agriculture, uh, health tourism uh, and other uh, others as well. So, uh, I mean, people should be uh, uh, more of an outlook look rather than an inward look. Yes, uh, uh, don't forget the, uh, the, uh, the uh, internal economy, but at the same time, uh, uh, vigorously go out and, and speak to people and, and, and uh, bring the attention of the international community and the uh, uh, business people from out the outside world.
And I think this is a, a, would be a win-win situation for everybody, whether it's Zimbabwe or the international community, because there are opportunities here in Zimbabwe. Indeed, thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me, and um, uh, it's a pleasure to, uh, uh, to, uh, to speak to your uh, uh, media outlet. And uh, uh, I'm always here to uh, foster relations between both our nations, be it in the politi political sphere or the economic sphere. Indeed, thank you very much. Thank you.